In this video, we will define microbial growth and examine the energy and chemical requirements of microbial cells. Let's begin with the definition of growth. Students have often explored the term growth in a previous science course prior to encountering it in the microbiology class. Students have learned that growth typically means an increase in the size of an organism. In microbiology, the term growth is utilized in a different manner. In microbiology, the term growth refers to an increase in the size of a population rather than in the size of an individual. Microbial growth results in the growth of either a discrete colony or a biofilm. Discrete colonies are an aggregation of cells that arose from a single parent cell, whereas biofilms are complex communities of microorganisms. Microbial growth is the result of the reproduction of the microbial cells. In the series of videos regarding microbial nutrition and growth, we will be examining the conditions microbial cells require for growth. We will first examine the requirements of cells in their natural environment and then look at how microbiologists attempt to meet those requirements in the lab setting. Microbiologists must meet the necessary requirements of the particular organism if they are to expect growth. The ability of a lab microbiologist to grow microorganisms is important in allowing to us to transport, identify, and study microorganisms. All cells require nutrients to meet their energy needs and to build organic molecules necessary for cellular structures and metabolism. Microbes obtain their nutrients from a variety of sources in their environments. Most nutrients include important and necessary elements such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Organisms can be classified based on their sources of carbon, energy, and electrons. Let's first examine classifications based on carbon sources. Organisms are classified into two groups based on their source of carbon. Those that utilize inorganic carbon or carbon dioxide as their source are referred to as autotrophs. Autotrophs use the carbon dioxide to synthesize their needed organic molecules. Thus, we can say they feed themselves. Heterotrophs, on the other hand, must acquire reduced organic molecules such as carbohydrates, proteins, amino acids, and lipids from other organisms. Organisms can also be classified into two groups based on their source of energy. Organisms may acquire their energy from light or from chemicals. Phototrophs utilize light as their source of energy to drive cellular processes, whereas chemotrophs utilize the energy derived from redox reactions that involve inorganic or organic molecules. Those utilizing organic molecules will catabolize the organic molecules to capture the energy via one of the pathways discussed in microbial metabolism which includes aerobic cellular respiration and aerobic cellular respiration and or fermentation. The table shows four groups of organisms based on their carbon and energy sources. Photoautotrophs, chemoautotrophs, photoheterotrophs, and chemoheterotrophs. The organisms of interest in this course are considered chemoheterotrophs, and since we are focusing on pathogens, it should be recognized that when causing infection and disease, they are deriving their nutrients from the host. Finally, organisms may be classified based on their source of hydrogen and electrons. Hydrogen is never a growth-limiting nutrient because it is the most abundant chemical element in cells and is available in organic macromolecules and water within the cell. Cells can again be classified into two groups based on their source of electrons. Those known as organotrophs acquire their electrons from the same organic molecules that serve as their source of carbon, while lithotrophs acquire their electrons from inorganic molecules.